Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now this one will be about like what kind of root apps I use on Android 10 because I got a good few comments asking why would you want to root you know your Android what kind of apps would you want to use if you did. So hopefully this video will kind of show you the kind of stuff you can do with root apps. So I'll just make this bigger over here. That way you can see a little bit better. And so for this video, I've created a tab here with all the root apps that I installed. So just in case I forget. So let's start off with Addaway. Now Addaway is a system wide ad blocker. So what it does is it is it downloads basically uh, URLs that have ads and then it changes the hosts file to use basically localhost. Now here is another root app uh, open host file editor and this is what Adaway does. So you see all of these URLs they point to like known ad domains and what it does it redirects them to basically nothing. So when your phone tries to connect to say this ad dot double click dot net or whatever, it won't be able to connect basically. So the ad won't show up. And this works with like Google Chrome and everything system wide. Uh, it doesn't block YouTube ads because uh, Google uses kind of integrated in in the in their YouTube app. So to set this up, what you want to do is go into preferences and enable systemless mode. So this works handy with Magisk and Magisk is another kind of root app. It deals with all the um, like root permissions. So if you go to super user, all these apps are allowed to use root, but Magisk in itself has like a bunch of cool stuff. So what you want to do is enable systemless hosts. So you could just click on that and it will create a module by itself. Now, if you're doing this first time, you, you should reboot. And now this will allow uh, Adway to basically work without modifying your system partition, which is great. All right, so next root app is AF Firewall. This is fairly straightforward. It's just a firewall. You can choose whether you want apps to connect to your local network, Wi-Fi, uh, 4G or VPN. And then the middle one is roaming. I just turned all that off since I don't want my apps to, you know, waste credit if you're roaming. <laughs> so this works as, as you can see here, Asphalt 9, for example. It is only allowed to use the internet when I'm connected to a VPN. And you'll probably see this for most of my apps since I run my VPN like pretty much all the time. Since it's kind of handy. The main reason I run VPN is because um, the network provider that I use, they block pretty much everything. <laughs> so that's why. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll show you like all the apps that you basically don't want to use internet. So I have here some kind of offline games that don't need to use internet because like most of the time, if, if they do, they'll just throw ads up on you every time you like restart a level or something. And this way they think you're offline, so they won't show any ads at all. Yeah, so that's mainly why. And then sometimes there's like these kind of you know, apps that, for example, like a calculator that shouldn't really need to connect to internet and whatever. So I just have these, I call of these all off. Some of them should actually be on, but I haven't really used them that much. So anyway, next app is a build prop editor. What this does is it basically allows you to modify uh, your device's properties. So if you wanted to modify your fingerprint and stuff like that, you can do that. And 
so you can modify the ASSQ. So for example, you can change this to CN or WW for the global edition. So this is a nice way to do it. If you don't want to use like some other root explorer or whatever, you can just do it through this. Now EX kernel manager allows you to control your kernel if you have a custom kernel. Now at the moment I just have the standard Android 10 default kernel, but you can still change like the CPU frequencies and stuff like that. So if your phone is running quite hot when you're gaming or whatever, you can decrease the maximum CPU frequency. And since this CPU is a beast, it should work fine still. Yeah, so it has like GPU as well. You can change the GPU frequencies. You can do a bunch of like memory killer stuff. Now this is a paid app by the way, so I think it's like costs a fiber or whatever, but it's very handy if you're using like especially stuff like custom terminals. Now Fdroid, this isn't what you call a root app. This is just like an alternative to Google Play Store because some of the root apps that I feature, you won't find them on the Play Store, like Adaway, for example, uh, that has been removed by Google because Google likes ads, I suppose. <laughs> so you can install Adaway here. All right, next one is Hack App Data. Basically, um, all Android apps, they have their own kind of preferences, which is kind of like mini database. And then they also have a database as well. So I'll show you here, for example, Infinite Loop. This is a game. And as you can see here at the bottom, this is like all the preferences. And here you can like change your level or whatever. And then this is the database. Now most apps that I have tried using this on don't really have too much of a database because they kind of use their own a sort of storage encryption yoke so they don't use like the standard uh, database that Android provides for apps. So to see how this works for example we can change our current level so if I go into infinite loop right now And then we can see that our level is 1907. So if I just exit out of this, then go back in here, and then we can change this number to, let's say, uh, let's change it to two. And then you would want to change the top value as well, in this case anyway. So what this does is it just makes the levels harder. And if I launch up infinite loop again, and as you can see, we're right now on level two, nine oh seven. So I just use this mostly for infinite loop because when I uh, download it, it's like the first uh, like 200 levels or so, they're like pretty straightforward. So I just crank this up and that way I don't have to play through the levels again. All right, so next up is Linux deploy. Now what this is, is it creates a kind of like a virtual machine inside your phone, but it's actually a CH root environment. So you can either use Ubuntu, Slackware, Kali Linux, Debian, all that kind of stuff. The architecture for this phone would be ARM64, since this is a 64-bit uh, ARM CPU. And then you'd want to enable GUI, which uses VNC. Now, I won't show you like all the stuff inside Linux Deploy. I might make like a separate video on it, since it's quite involved. But it's handy if you, I don't know, if you forgot your laptop at home or something and you only have your phone and you want to do something, then you can use that. And the next one is Lucky Patcher. I'm sure most of you know this one. This one allows you to like patch applications. 
So some of the applications have custom patches. So if you look at the custom patch, it's usually stuff like enable pro version, enable paid version, all that kind of stuff. All right, I'll do that later. And so, yeah, and then you can also, some games they support like emulating, buying stuff or whatever. All right, so next one is, okay, we checked out Magisk Manager, we checked out Open Host Editor. So this one is Android 10 specific. This is Quick Switch. You actually get it from Magisk Manager. So if you go to downloads and you look up Quick Switch, you can install it from here. And what this does is it allows you to use gestures with uh, basically other launchers. So by default, you would only be able to use gestures with the ASUS launcher, but with the help of this, I can use it with launcher launcher as well. So that's basically what that does. Um, SD card pro is, or SD made pro, I mean, like basically when you uninstall applications and stuff like that, there is usually some stuff left over if the developer didn't like do it properly, you know? And then system cleaner is usually like kind of temporary files. And then app cleaner is like the app cache and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see here, I have 700 megabytes of cache that can be freed. So you can just press delete. Now this does use root access because it needs to target the apps cache and the databases. So that's pretty much the only reason. I'm pretty sure you can run this without root if you're using only system cleaner and corpse cleaner. So I'll just let that run in the background. And um, next one is system app remover. So what this does is if you have like apps pre-installed, like, I don't know, Facebook or whatever, and you can't remove it with like basically Android doesn't let you remove it. You can use, yeah, so for example, I have Facebook services here. Now for this phone, it actually bricks your phone if you remove, <laughs> well, it doesn't brick your phone. You just need to flash the system partition again if you remove Facebook services for some reason, I don't know why, but like on most phones, it's fine if you just want to remove like crap that's pre-installed. So that's that. Uh, next one would be titanium backup. Now this is great. So this is for backing up your applications and data. So if your phone ever gets messed up and you need to reinstall the OS, you can just copy over all of these files. So what this does is it creates a, if I open up this, it creates a titanium backup folder here. So you can just copy this whole folder to your phone after you restored it. And then you can go into here, batch actions, and then just like restore, for example, this one, restore missing apps with data, or you can restore all apps with data. So if I run this one, prefer XML, you can just restore like all the apps that you had once again. So that's handy. I'm not going to do it now because there's no point. And now the next app is the password viewer. Now this is handy because by default, Android doesn't let you view your passwords for some reason. <laughs> so if I go into here, um, or if I go into settings here and like edit, when you click show password, you don't, it doesn't show password, which I don't know why it doesn't do that by default, but that's why apps like this exist, I suppose. So this is handy. You can like share this with your friends who come over. You can use like a QR code so your friends can scan your password and whatnot. Now by default, uh, the QR code is present in this, I think. Yeah, so your friends can scan this QR code as well, but 
some phones, like especially older Androids, they don't have this QR code scanning feature. So that's handy. Then last of all, you might be thinking, YouTube, what the hell is this? <laughs> YouTube isn't a root app. Well, this is actually YouTube Advanced. So what is YouTube Advanced? Well, it basically allows some cool features, like you can swipe from the left and the right side of the screen to increase your, your um, what you call it, volume, increase your brightness and stuff like that. And it also gets rid of all the apps or all the, all the ads. So as I was saying earlier, Adaway alone doesn't remove ads from uh, YouTube, but YouTube Advanced does this basically modified uh, YouTube application. And you also have like a black theme throughout the app. And I'll show you the, so if I just go into my video here, some, I'll play something. Um, yeah, sure, let's play this one. And if I turn the phone sideways here, it's going to full screen and I can use the right side of the screen to increase the brightness. And then the left side of the screen to increase and decrease the volume. So that's pretty handy. All right, so yeah. And then I suppose another thing I could show you is if you go into utilities, um, terminal emulator. Oh yeah, before I show you that. Um, How you get YouTube Advanced is if you go into Magisk Manager and then you search for YouTube Advanced basically. And there we go. So just download either the black themed one, which is the one I have, or the other one. This one is not completely black. It's more kind of gray, dark gray background, but I like the super black one. I think it looks really nice. Yeah. So. Anyway, as I was saying, you can also use a sh terminal and root also works for this. So if you type in su, you have root. So if you type who am I, I am root. And then you can like go to your root directory now. And then you can access all of these files. So whereas by default, you would only be able to access like a SD card. So by default, you would only be able to see this, but now you can access like your system partition, all that kind of stuff. Now I won't recommend messing with this too much because an Android, anything you do with the system partition uh, kind of messes up your uh, safety net. So if you modify stuff in your system partition, uh, I think the basic integrity will be false. And that way you won't be able to use like Google Play and stuff like that since your phone is technically modified. And so Google doesn't want you to like use the good stuff, you know. And then CTS profile, I think is if you have like the wrong fingerprint or whatever. If your device doesn't match like Google's database or whatever. So yeah, that's, um, that's about it. Just wanted to show you guys like all the kind of root apps I have and why I have them. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and bye bye.